Oh, oh, good double move. Oh. We need to break. Get out. That's what now he's working. Now, get him back up. Oh, get out. <laughs> Whoa, the former number one and number two overall picks in the same draft that Lamar Jackson was selected in, who both have huge contracts coming up, partaking in physical activity with kids at a camp, even one of them coming off a significant injury. But I didn't hear any uproar. It's kind of weird. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's Ingraven Raven here with another video and another episode of questions from subs which is a series where you can ask me any question about the NFL that you want to and we answer it in a video just like this if you want to be part of NFL questions from subs you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons you can send it directly on patreon uh, we got some great questions as we always do shout out to all the team keep it clean patrons shout out to y'all thank you for 43,000 subscribers it, there are literally 43,000 people in this world who are psycho enough to press the subscribe button on this channel. So I appreciate you and all your psychoness, if that's even a word, or all your craziness, that's a word. Uh, but I do love y'all. I t appreciate y'all team. Keep it clean. It's almost time for the season. It's almost time for the season. So things have been crazy nonstop in the off season. So trust me, it's going to get even better uh, once that season hits. But until then, man, let's keep on pushing. Let's keep on going. And I hope that everybody is doing good. I love y'all. Let's get into these questions. First question came from my guy, Lee. He said, Engraving, what's up, brother? What's going on, Lee? He said, something I wanted to get your opinion on. During the NBA Finals, which I, I watched, I watched, um, I watched... One and a half of the finals game because I did watch the game last night. I watched the entire game, which I loved and I appreciated. I was rooting for the Bucks. I was hoping that they would win because with Giannis, he reminds me so much of Lamar Jackson and his story, his situation. And I tweeted about it too. Uh, they, they, it's like the same thing. They people complain about their play style. People always got something to say about them. People call them chokers in the playoffs, and they just Giannis got it done. He shut it all down. So I'm hoping that with Lamar Jackson, it can be a similar type of story. But anyway, he said, um, during the NBA Finals, I was rooting like crazy for Giannis to win that ring. Reason being is that every time I think of his game, I see Lamar. No NBA superstar gets more hate than Giannis. Uh, well, there's LeBron, so but I, I feel what you're saying. Uh, all we ever hear is what he can't do, all the limitations he has, et cetera, et cetera. Well, he just won the chip. Like Giannis, all we hear about Lamar is about his shortcomings and what he can't do than his, than his strengths. My thought is, if Giannis can win a championship without being the perfect superstar, Lamar Jackson can certainly win it as well. What are your thoughts? Oh, for sure. For sure. Like, <laughs> for sure. And I, I really do hope this year would be a great time to do it. Again, because you look at what Giannis just did, his his whole story, where he came from, how he is. Again, like it, with, with Giannis, I remember like two days ago, Twitter was just going crazy. With, it's just like people were just reaching for stuff with Giannis. They're like, oh, man, this is why a lot of NBA players aren't friends with him. And they're like, what? Come on, man. It's, it, it's like they were just nitpicking and trying to find any little thing about Giannis. Oh, Giannis, not Giannis, Giannis, I'm over here saying Giannis, like, anyway, um, it, and it's, it's just, it's sad, man, it's sad, then you had some NBA players chiming in too, um, but it, it is what it is, I'm glad he won, I'm glad they won, uh, it was looking like, I remember watching that, uh, that Nets and Bucks game, the one that went to overtime, uh, who that was a crazy game, I remember watching that game and thinking, ooh, uh-oh, like, okay, this, like, this team is real deal. Uh, and they they went ahead, of course went ahead and won that series, um, and they made it. They made it. I thought Nets were gonna win that game. Uh, once it went to overtime, I thought Nets were gonna get it, but nope. Bucks said no. We got this. We 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 good. And they took care of business. 
Um, so shout out to him. Um, again, he like it, there's play like everybody. Once you reach a certain level of success and whatever you do, there's gonna be hate that comes along with it. But then there's some people where they just they get extra hate, and you try to find why, and it's because they're different. Giannis Lamar. Right, next question came from my guy Martin. He said, "Hey, Graven, hope all is well." Uh, you brought up a great point and one that I have always thought about. It's finally nice to finally meet someone that thinks the same way, and that is about Matthew Stafford. Uh, why are people always doubting Lamar, but you hear nothing but good things about Matthew Stafford? Uh, in 12 seasons, he's only had four winning seasons. Lamar already has three. After giving it a lot of thought, I think I finally found the answer. Experts, reporters, YouTubers, Twitter people, whoever, they all know if they hurl criticism at Matthew Stafford the way they do Lamar, nobody would care. Uh, with Lamar, you will have every hater and supporter of Lamar reading or watching what you're saying just by saying the name Lamar Jackson. Uh, that'll have people arguing one way or the other. So talking about Stafford doesn't get them the attention that Lamar Jackson would. That's why nobody bothers with Matthew Stafford. Uh, you watch when Josh Allen regresses next year during the following offseason when there's nothing to talk about. Uh, you will see articles left and right on how he's not as good as everyone thinks uh, he is. And he's just a runner without Stefan Diggs. Sorry, I know I got sidetracked between the comparison of Lamar and Matthew Stafford. But my point is that people only talk about what gets views. Lamar and Allen get views and clicks. Stafford doesn't. Sorry for the long question, but maybe this is more of a get it off your chest. <laughs> Well, yeah, you got it off your chest, but now it's all good. Um, I, I think that um, the reason that it is is because Stafford is more of a traditional guy. He's more of a traditional quarterback, but he's also a traditional quarterback that loses. He just loses. Matt Stafford has not he, – he's got these nice stats and everything, but Matt Stafford has not in his entirety of his NFL career – he has not had half the impact that Lamar Jackson has had on the NFL. He has not had half of the impact. So when you talk about Matthew Stafford, um, you yeah, boom, 5,000 yard seasons, a bunch of 4,000 yard seasons, a bunch of passing yards, da, da 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 And he's not a bad quarterback. He's just a losing quarterback. But Lamar Jackson, 4,000 yard passing seasons? No. 5,000 yard passing seasons? No. Nah. Mm -mm. But the touchdowns are up, interceptions are down, the wins, the most important thing, are way up. Um, and again, like we said previously, Lamar is different. He does not play quarterback the traditional way, he does not play it like everybody wants him to play it. So people don't like that. People talk about it. But again, like you mentioned, he has success. Since Lamar Jackson has success and Stafford doesn't, what's talking about Stafford going to do? What, 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 what's that gonna, what, what point is that going to make? It's not. But Lamar, yeah, he, he changed the game. He changed the media. Well, actually, he didn't change the media because the media, you know, media just, they just be saying stuff just to say it. But Stafford just, he's not it. He's cool. Again, he's not bad, but he ain't Lamar. Next question came from my guy Raven Pride. He said, what's going on in Graven? Hope you and the family are in good health. And I definitely can't forget about Pookie. Uh, I just want to share what has been going on with me in the past two weeks. As you know, I'm a truck driver. Uh, well, I just recently purchased my first truck and I'm on cloud nine. Oh, congrats on that. Because I, um, I know a few truck drivers. And that is a, a huge step uh, for truck drivers. Because as a truck driver, initially you start off by driving for a company. So you drive for somebody. Uh, because they have their own trucks and they have contractor or whatever company, but they it's under them. But when you get your own truck, like that's like that's huge because that is the stepping stone to doing your own thing, running your own show. So congrats on that, because that's a big move, man. He said, I waited for this moment for a long time and I'm so excited uh, too for myself. And I wanted to also share this with Team Keep It Clean. OK, hey, we appreciate that, man. I'm happy for you. He said, before I go, I just want you to know how much I appreciate you for all of what you do. And you can definitely count on me to be forever grateful being part of the Team Keep It Clean family. Hey, appreciate that, man. Pre I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, and P.S. I can't forget what a wonderful job your aunt did for myself and my family with the mask. Love you, bro, and God bless. Hey, appreciate that, man. And thank you for, um, 
for even uh, having given my aunt the opportunity to uh, make the mask for your family. So I, I appreciate that a lot. Thank you for uh, for supporting not only us, but for supporting uh, my family as well. Next question came from my guy Dominic S. He said, hey man, hope everything is well. Just thinking about how good our offense can be this year. With the addition of new wide receivers, linemen, and coaches, things go very well. I think we can be at the top of the league again in points per game and wonder who should it be attributed to. Do you think more change would be because Greg Roman listened or because of the concepts that Martin comes up with? Well, it would definitely be a, a combination of both. It couldn't just be one or the other. It would have to be a combination of everything. So we wouldn't just be able to give the credit, okay, Greg Roman, or even though Greg Roman, he's already been doing his thing as an offensive coordinator, despite how frustrated we get sometimes, uh, that the offense still does score a lot of points. Now, in playoffs, we just we, we want that to translate in the playoffs as well. Uh, but that's a whole other conversation. But the um, it, it will be a combination of everybody because it, with football, it, it, it's not just, it can never just be one person. It can't. It's impossible. It just doesn't work that way. So it'll be a combination uh, of everybody. Uh, and his next question, he says, so I've been thinking about the future of this team, especially on defense. Our three interior defensive linemen, Williams, Wolf, and Campbell, are all up there in age. So this tells me we would have, we could have a very young defense in the upcoming season. Uh, my question is, do you think uh, the Ravens could make another veteran move on the defense for in the future? Or would you be okay with having the young guns in there? As always, you know, they invest in the defense. Well, they, they certainly do. Um, but it's really uh, not necessarily too early to think about that. But Ravens, they will um, they'll certainly take care of that. Uh, Calais Campbell, I think this is his last season. Derek Wolf, what did he sign? I think a two-year deal. But that doesn't really mean anything. Y'all know how it goes nowadays. Most players don't even finish out their deals. Um, and then Brandon Williams, you know, his name every year comes up as a possible cap casualty. Uh, but I really do think that Brandon Williams, this could be it for him. So hopefully they go out on top. But anyway, um, the Ravens, they're, they're going to take care of it. Uh, there's the draft. There's free agency. Uh, so they'll, they'll have plenty of options for what they can do uh, with the interior of their defensive line. So it's, it's kind of it's, it's very early to tell that right now. It's, 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 it's really hard to say what you think they're going to do or what I think they're going to do because we haven't even gotten through this season yet. Uh, but you do, of course, have Matt Abike right now. You got Broderick Washington waiting in the wings. Um, you got Jalen Ferguson. Uh, so we got to see what happens with those guys before we transition from the old guys. And, of course, we got to get through this season as well. And then his last question, he said, do you think if things are going good, but not great midway through, that the Ravens would make the move to fire Greg Roman? We know how he does in big games and playoffs and divert from what is actually working. Uh, he has a lot of tendencies in play calling on crucial downs that just don't make sense. I think the longer they hold on to him, the more they are really holding the offense back. Just think about all the talent we had that didn't get used. All a guy needs is an opportunity. What do you think? Um, it, it just every, Everything just depends on so much, man. It, it, it depends on so much uh, with Greg Roman. Um, and it, it's, it, just, it just depends, man. Because if the offense, say if they winning and the offense is doing, even if they're doing good, not great, Greg Roman is going to stay. For him to be fired is even midseason, I think the offense would just have to be atrocious. There would have to be some terrible decisions being made, like consistently uh, game in and game out uh, for Greg Roman to be Put up out of here. Um, so hopefully he doesn't get fired because that would mean that the offense is doing a good job. So hopefully Greg Roman does not get fired. Next question came from my boy Adrian. He said, hey, Engraven, it's your boy Adrian. PFS strikes again. My question is, why do they really believe Baker Mayfield is a top 10 quarterback for one? And two, why they feel they need to keep putting Lamar Jackson underneath subpar quarterbacks like Dak Prescott and Matt Ryan, who hasn't been talked about in like five years? Uh, thanks for taking the time to answer my question and keep putting out great videos. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Ravens flock. Appreciate you, Adrian. Um... I, I I think that with with Baker Baker is not he's not a bad quarterback. Dak Prescott is not a bad quarterback. Matt Ryan um <laughs> he's not a bad quarterback. Um but with those guys I I think again it's just the traditional thing. That's my biggest thing is it's the traditional thing that those guys are more traditional type quarterbacks. All of them. All of them. They play the game a more in a more normal way with more normal offense. 
Uh, and they get the uh, they get the bigger passing yards. It doesn't necessarily mean they have the better games, but they get the bigger passing yards. And a lot of people tend to get caught up in passing yards as if that is the end-all, be-all, and that really determines uh, who and what a quarterback is, and that determines that quarterback's success. Uh, we all know that it doesn't. Um, but, and again, with these lists, I think so sometimes I just think some of these lists are just straight up to troll uh, and just to get us through the slowest part of the uh, the slow season, which was a couple of weeks ago. And it's, it's fun. Again, y'all know I love going over the list. Uh, but I think these people, as much as I love going over the list, I think these people love making those lists to try to troll people and get them worked up and get them upset uh, just so they can have just a little more something to talk about uh, during the off season. Shout out to Graven.